Hi, it's Rob Moore here and welcome to probably my favourite session module on the podcast Fast Start Online Masterclass and that is the monetization section. Now we're going to go deep here. This is not skimming the surface. Deep on 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 maybe ways of monetizing your podcast. Now those of you that know my story of the disruptive entrepreneur launched nearly four and a half years ago, now subscribers in over 200 countries, millions of downloads and subscribers. I never intended to monetize my podcast. It was not a thing that I, look, it wasn't that I want, didn't want money, of course. Money's great. Um, I just didn't need the money and therefore I felt I wanted to create a piece of art well, maybe that's <laughs> being a bit too self-congratulating. We can't necessarily call my podcast a piece of art. But you know what I mean? I wanted the content to be really good. I wanted that to be the main focus. I didn't want people to think I was using it to just try and monetize them. Uh, I listened to quite a few American podcasts before I started my own. And many of them, whilst really good, had a lot of ads on. Like some of them would have five ads at the start, seven, eight, nine minutes of ads. Uh, and I was like, whoa, and I just didn't want mine to be like that. And back then, I suppose I probably thought that ads was the only way that you would monetize your podcast. I didn't know any other ways. So I kind of innocently went about just creating content, starting with my um, individual pieces and then doing interviews and then caffeine casts and then Rob's rants. Uh, and then as it grew, I started um, having people say to me, Oh, Rob, I found you from your podcast. And these people would be my clients who'd done courses with me. Uh, I have a mentoring program. It's a, a year-long mentoring program. Uh, you get eight sessions a year with me. Uh, and then you get full access to me on WhatsApp day or night for at least one year. And that's minimum £25,000 plus for that absolute minimum. I have celebrities and, you know, very wealthy people as well as, you know, people who are um, sort of starting and scaling up. And I would say of the last, what, 40, 50 clients I've taken on, on my mentoring, a, a roughly equally 50, 50, they find me either from one of my books or my podcast. Uh, and none of this was intentional. It wasn't lead generation or funnels or anything like that. It was just they'd listened to 10, 20, 100 episodes. They'd done their own research on me. They'd found my website, my other social media platforms, and they'd trickled down. And you've heard me talk a lot about trickle down revenue. So, you know, let's say you had 50 clients at uh, um, 25,000 pounds. You know, that's a decent amount of money. You can do the maths on that. And half of them coming from your podcast, roughly, and half of them coming from your book. Or that's the origin, the origin of where they found you. I'm not saying they listen to a podcast episode and give you 25 grand. Of course, I'm not saying that. But they, the, where they found you initially... Um, you know, where they consumed the content and built that goodwill and that rapport. Um, that was in, you know, about 50-50, my podcast uh, and my books. Money, start now, get perfect later. I'm worth more, life leverage. So um, we st people started saying this. And I was like, whoa, this podcast makes money without trying to make money. It gets the trickle down revenue. And I'm going to talk about that as one of the monetization sessions. Because even though that, that was an accident, it kind of wasn't in the, um, I, I have a lot of business verticals and ecosystems and I'd intentionally over the last pff, seven or eight years built my online assets and my online presence so that people who searched me could follow me, subscribe and then, you know, to come into my business ecosystems and buy my products and services. It just so happened that the podcast started to be a big sort of um, feeder of that, if you like. And that was all a, a complete um, accident and a, a pleasant surprise. I had no intention of running ads until um, Blinkist contacted me, uh, what, 450 episodes in and said, hey, look, we, we like your show. We'd like to talk about sponsoring you. And um, I love audio books, as you know, and I think Blinkist is a great concept where, you know, they do really short versions of books so that you can listen to them to get a feel if you want to actually get the audio book or you can put more content in summaries. I thought, what, what a great service. So I actually thought, thought that could be really good. Uh, and then they pay me about five times the lower end average that you'd get for an ad. Um, most ads are 19, 30, 
38 pounds per thousand downloads and uh, Blinkist pay me 105 pounds per thousand. So that kind of happened by an accident. They courted me rather than me courting them. Um, And then, of course, Patreon, that was something I didn't know about four and a half years ago. uh, And all these different other monetization models, which I've just learned as I've gone. And um, now uh, you can create multiple streams of income from your podcast. It's very, very exciting. And by the way, it's up to you. But you absolutely can choose to monetize your podcast early. Um, Now, um, if it were me, and let's say, because back then when I started my podcast nearly four and a half, five years ago, um, I didn't need the money because I was already financially sufficient. I didn't need to monetize the podcast. So I was able to just think about revenue much later. Let's say on the other extreme, you're, you're brassic, you're skin, you know, you're like, oh, I've got to monetize this podcast immediately up front. I'm going to try and work out a plan for you where if you do want to monetize it early, whether you want to or need to, but without, um, you know, like, I don't know, without, without pillage, is that the right word? But, you know, without it being too aggressive too soon. And so my, um, my strategy, if I were you, wanting to monetize the podcast would be to record the first 20 or so episodes and don't run an ad on them. Um, because if you think about it, If someone lands on your first one and there's three ads, you might just lose some goodwill. Uh, And America, probably not so much. But in the UK, we are a bit more sensitive to ads. Oh, they're advertising. Oh, they're promoting to me. That's disgraceful. We are a bit like that, let's be honest. Um, And look, I'm I'm definitely... uh, I don't really have any problem with anyone selling anything as long as it's not a scam. Um, But even sometimes I'm like, man, how many ads? Blah, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. There's someone who I respect greatly, who I've actually had on my podcast. And he launched his podcast, I think about a year ago. And there were like three ads at the start. And the guy's supposed to be super successful and, you know, pretty wealthy. And I just thought, it's just a bit desperate if you're running so many ads on episode one before we've even started. And then you're seven minutes in and then you're interrupting us with another ad. Now, that might be my perception and you've got to make your own choice. And I'm not definitely every, uh, you know, I, I am not the, um, the be all and end all of all podcast listeners and the, the fountain of all knowledge. But I reckon you can get a good balance. And if you make your first six to 10 episodes really good, really good content, some good energy, enthusiasm, some good teases for the next episodes, you go deep, but not too technical. So your, your first um, six or 10 episodes uh, in your niche, but as wide as possible. So I, my first episode is how to do more of what you love. Um, let's say you do six to 10 really good episodes. Then you're going to have someone pretty much convinced about you after 10 or 20 episodes. Um, whereas if they land in this three ads, you might get a fair bounce rate. Uh, And once they're 20 episodes in and they're like, I really like this Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast. I've had a lot of value already. When you run ads, they're not going to go, oh, wait a minute. That's it. Ruined. Over. Gone. Unsubscribe. One star review. Tell They're not. They're already a fan by then. So they're just going to accept it. And as long as it's not um, a bit overbearing, then I think that's a good play. So I'd probably look at building that bank of six, 10 or 20 episodes and then starting your ads after that. Now, here's a way to monetize your podcast from day one is to go live with six, 10 or 20 episodes. So if you go way back to the early module that I did where I talked about six in the bank, which is when you go live, the day you go live, I believe you should have minimum six episodes live. Because if you just have one, people are going to go, oh, well, that podcast has only got one episode. Hmm, That's either new or old or um, there's not enough content there. Of course, it's too much of an effort to have 50 um, all there on the day of launch. But if you get six, 10 recorded up front done and then you go live on, you know, say, 1st of October and then 10 episodes go live because you can go live with as many episodes as you want or, or 20 then you can actually start monetizing from day one because episode 10 or 20 is the one that has the first ad on it. But it goes live on day one, but they're probably going to listen to episode one and two. They're probably going to go in that order when you go live. So you can be really clever and monetize from day one, but it's not from episode one. And I'm a big fan of building the remote goodwill. As you know, I do 
one, two videos a day on um, Facebook. I do one video a day on YouTube. I do dozens of pieces of content a day on all social media. I do three podcast episodes a week on Disruptive Entrepreneur, one podcast a week on money. I'm a big fan of killing people with content, killing them with goodwill and kindness and value, because I believe that's the best way to grow your brand, to sell your products and services, because there's the minimum amount of friction. I'm going to do questions at the end of this one, by the way, because I've got a nice deep dive session um, and I want to get into flow, but I'll I'll stay as long as you need until the end um, for for Q&A. Okay, so get this, there's 60 million Facebook business pages. There's 500 million blogs. There's 31 million YouTube channels, but there's less than 600,000 podcasts as we speak. Now, a lot of people say to me, oh, Rob, everyone's doing a podcast, everyone's doing a podcast. No, no. There's 70 million people in the UK alone. There's 350 plus in the US and only 600,000 active podcasts. So you're in at a great time in in a less competitive market. Um, I said to you in the last module about a billion dollars of ad revenue will be spent on podcasts in 2020. That's going to go up and up and up and up, I'm sure. Um, So, yeah, great time to get in. And by the way, um, if you're watching live, I have something very exciting to announce at the end of this Deep Dive Live Masterclass. So make sure you stay to the end. And if you're watching the recording, um, it can it can also be relevant to you. Um, So uh, if you're watching the recording, of course, you're going to stay to the end. Um, But, yeah, this isn't something that I've done for a long time or I'd plan to do on this podcast Fast Start Online Masterclass. So it's it's something new and exciting. So right now, podcasts have pretty much the least competition for ad spend and ad space. It has pretty much the highest engagement rate because if you have a Facebook page, you might get one, two, three percent reach. But there's zero restriction of reach. Anyone who subscribes to your podcast will see all of your episodes. Uh, It has currently the lowest number of ads. There's so many podcasts with no ads. There's some podcasts with one ad um, and the same ad over and over. So, um, you know, if you think about some people have a Facebook page, they have ads on every single video. YouTube, there's lots of ads on YouTube. So you're in a great time here. Uh, And so, you know, of course, Today is the best time to start. Start now, get perfect later. You can't start yesterday. But I just want to say cheers, you're in at the right time. And I don't just mean for your content and I don't just mean for launching your podcast, but I mean as an active um, ad revenue and monetization strategy. Okay, so um, last year there was a 41% increase in ad blocking software but ads do not get blocked and can't get blocked on a podcast Um, because obviously many other channels, there's spam, but there's spammers have not found a way to spam and infiltrate um, running spam ads on podcasts. So that's obviously really good. So it's highly under monetized compared to virtually every other media channel. Um, Research shows that podcast ads are the most memorable um, and also the most effective ad model right now. And if you think about it, listeners of podcasts also listen to podcasts because they're listening to a podcast. They're very engaged listenership because they become real fans because they're deep into it in their ears, in in full immersion. They're not on their laptop watching in the background or anything like that or get watching YouTube. But then I'll I'll, I'll go and watch that one down the right hand side. I'll watch a couple of minutes. I'm bored. I'll go and watch that one. They're really engaged. And of course, you've got the host listener relationship. So the host listener relationship is so unique. It's so connected. There's such deep goodwill and rapport. Um, so again, that's perfect for developing revenue because obviously there's that trust built and people will buy what you recommend them, which is one of the reasons I didn't run a load of random ads is because I knew there was such deep trust and I didn't want to run an ad on something that, you know, my clients, um, my listeners might go, oh, I'm not sure. Or is Rob just trying to sell me or hmm, that doesn't seem really like Rob. I, I was really, really um, sensitive to not do that. But of course, Blinkist, I mean, if Costa Coffee or Zoom or StreamYard or Odomar Piguet or Alexander McQueen or Blinkist or Audible, um, you, you know, those kind of companies, I, I am in love with those companies. I, there's just no two ways about it. I am in love with Wilson Speakers. I am in love with 
um, Audemars Piguet watches. I am in love with Alexander McQueen clothes. So I'd probably bloody market them for free. But of course, if you, you know, if they pay you for the ads um, or the sponsorship, which is different, by the way, so I'll let you know that later, you've got a, a win-win there. And do you know what? I, I, I honestly, um, I need to kick myself a few times because uh, be- I've got a lot going on. Um, I have, what, nine or ten income streams and various businesses, letting agency, property training business, property buying company, commercial, as well as residential. Oh, all my books around the world. Um, of course, I've got my podcast and everything else. Um, my supporter program, my stars program, my Patreon. Um, but I have totally underutilized my podcast from a monetization point of view. I could have had uh, sponsors of my episodes um, I could have got Zoom. Easy, Zoom. I mean, Zoom must have sold thousands of recorders, thanks to me. Um, and I've just completely missed a trick because, because I didn't need the money. So maybe I should have needed the money and then I would have made more money. Um, oh, by the way, I'm changing that because I've approached Zoom and StreamYard. Um, you know, get some commish, come on. Uh, now, people who listen to podcasts, they listen to podcasts. I know it sounds so obvious. But so much marketing you have to do is not targeted and you don't know if it's your right niche or your demographic. And it's a bit of a gamble and you've got to spend all this money up front. Uh, But podcasts, they're perfect because the target market is already a podcast listener. So there's no friction there. Cool. All right, then. So there are 11 main ways to monetize your podcast. I just got a little tickly excited feeling in my stomach because honestly this is my most favorite content of all the podcast content um i I really didn't think it would make me three four maybe five million um i just didn't think it would and it has and that for me has been a great surprise and a great knock-on benefit and if i think well if i actually got strategic and properly tried to make money out of it imagine so if you think, let's say it's four million over four years, it's roughly that, maybe a bit more, then that's a million a year, indirect, other than a few ads, it's all indirect trickle down accidental revenue. Now, Joe Rogan's 30 million US a year, um, but he's not indirect, you know, he, he, he monetizes it many different ways. He triple dips, in fact, which I will talk about later. Um, So if you're more strategic with monetizing your podcast and you have a plan from day one, even if, like I said, your first 20 episodes, you you decide not to run an add on, but you have a monetization plan from day one, the the extra revenue sources as you grow your podcast, you're going to make way more money than I do if you, you know, assuming that you get the same listenership. So um, let me just check if this is, yeah, I think this is... um, just the slide where it's a content slide. So here are the main ways to make money from your podcast. Uh, I'm going to tell you what they are and then we're going to go deep into each one. So advertising is the first one. Now, I believe advertising and sponsorships are different. So advertising is one. Sponsorship is two. Um, And by the way, there's at least two different ways to sponsor. Three is donations. Four is paid monthly subscription. Five is to build your other databases and profiles and sell there. Six is to fill and promote events. Seven is to sell your own services and products. Eight is trickle down revenue. Nine is repackaging the content and selling it elsewhere like on Udemy or Kajabi or GoToWebinar. Ten is Patreon and 11 is supporters, which is essentially crowdfunding. Uh, 12 is selling other people's products or uh, affiliations. Uh, And then there's the big one. So what's this, 13, 14, is selling your show and having a hard asset like it being a property. Um, Free economics sold for a reputed six million. Um, Spotify are going around buying loads of podcasts. Gimlet Media were, I think Spotify gobbled them up for a quarter of a billion, was it? I can't, I'm not sure the exact amount. Um, So, Yeah. This is some serious stuff. Uh, Right. So let's go through each one of these individually. Advertising, sponsorship, donations, paid monthly subscriptions, building lists and profiles, filling your events, selling your services, trickle down revenue, um, creating and repackaging the content onto other assets, Patreon supporters and crowdfunding, uh, uh, affiliations and selling other people's products and selling your show. And by the way, there are new revenue streams appearing. Like when I started doing podcasts, I reckon we knew seven. So we nearly double that now. So you might assume it might double again in another four or five years. Okay, so advertising. That's probably the most commonly known one. 
Uh, probably the original, you know, so you have a, the pre-roll, mid-roll and end-roll. So pre-roll is the ad before the show. Mid-roll is the ad in the middle that sort of interrupts and takes a commercial break. And then, you know, end roll. Uh, and I'm told uh, that mid-roll is the preferred and you'll get paid the most for mid-roll. The average advertising rates in the, in the UK um, are between 18 and £38 pounds per thousand downloads. Now, there are podcast ad brokers out there. We don't use them because have, we have a podcast agency. I have a team of probably nine people who are just fo- solely f- focused on my podcast, Money and Disruptive Entrepreneur, Mark Homer's podcast, Mark My Words, our Progressive Property podcast, and then we have about 100 agency clients who we do everything for them, host, syndicate. Um, in fact, I've got a couple of my clients here. I see Camilla's on the live. She's one of our podcast clients. She's about to launch the Camilla show. That's going to be big. You know that's going to be big. Um, so, yeah, and we have an agency that does everything for people, the baby without the labour pains. Um, so we don't use brokers, but there are podcast brokers out there. There are pro- podcast um, p- JV people out there who'll get you on other people's podcasts or broker ad deals with your podcast. Uh, and the average rates are 18 to 38 pounds per thousand that you get. Um, now, I got 105 pounds per thousand a deal with Blinkist and we dealt direct. And I reckon if you deal direct, you're likely to get more. Um, but you know, this was negotiated between us and them. They had an amount that they wanted to pay per thousand and they had a minimum number of downloads that they wanted to run the ad. Some people, because um, people ask me a lot of the time, well, what's the minimum downloads per episode um, you might need to run ads? Well, I'd probably say a thousand, but I get, getting a thousand downloads on an episode, honestly, it really is very easy. Um, that's a very small number of downloads and you should surpass that very quickly, naturally and organically. Um, Blinkist actually wanted, I think, about 5,000 downloads minimum. And of course, we're fine with that because we well exceed that on our episodes. Um, But of course, it's completely individually negotiable. So definitely once you've got your podcast live, you want to reach out to um, Spotify and Zoom and StreamYard and um, uh, I don't know, um, any online HR or software, Infusionsoft, Stroke Keep. Um, hosting platforms, digital agencies, marketing companies. You know, if you, if, if, uh, if you think about online companies, that's going to be really suited to running ads on a podcast. Now, if you want to be lazy, um, find a podcast broker, you know, a podcast ad broker, and they can, they can basically take your podcast to the market. Uh, but if you do it yourself, I think you're cutting out the middleman, essentially. So you're going to get a lot more. So, if, I mean, if you, if you, go, on the, if you go on the mid... So what are we? About 25 is roughly mid. I'm getting 400% more than um, the average amount of ad revenue. And like I said, I'm kind of kicking myself in a way. Maybe I was a bit too arty and snobby because I've had millions of downloads and subscribers. And yet I've only started running ads on the last 50 episodes. And I think I've only run five or four. I don't know how many so far, but not many. Um, but you can actually dynamically insert ads retrospectively, um, which means that let's say you've got episode one, you can insert an ad in today and then it runs from today. Obviously, it doesn't go in. It doesn't get listened to on past downloads, but any future downloads from then. So even if you've got um, you could, for example, get to a certain point and then dynamically insert an ad back into episode 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, if you wanted to. And that, by the way, that functionality is relatively new. Because if you think about it, the, um, the tech on podcasting is quite um, immature. There's no social media element. You know, there's no, um, you can't see people's downloads. So there's no um, sort of, um, what would you call it, uh, transparency on the back end. Whereas obviously if you look at, go onto YouTube, you can see people's downloads and subscribers. Um, so I think that the user functionality needs to improve dramatically of podcasting. And I think it will. I know some app developers who are trying to do that making it more intuitive, interactive and social. And when it gets there, podcasts are going to explode. And so is the ad revenue because it's all about eyeballs um, and the more or earballs <laughs> and the more people that list a podcast and what ad revenue there's going to be. OK, um, host red ads are the best for engagement. So the way Blinkist approached me was um, 
they had a, a set script that I had to read word for word. It was only about two lines. And then they had some preamble that they said it's fine for me to say in my own words. So they gave me a suggested preamble script of about six lines. Uh, and they said that this, the call to action, where I have to say the link twice, those two or three lines, have to say them verbatim. But the rest I could um, word and weave into my own. So I could almost make the ad break. Not really a break, but I could almost weave it in as part of the show um, and link it to my content to make it more elegant. So I, in my own, I, I created my own words out of that preamble uh, and then read for, uh, word for word the script. And then they give you your own unique tracking link so that they can track, um, you, you know, the sales from your podcast. And um, Blinkist told me they were looking for an 85% return on investment. Um, and they hit 100% ROI in about three days with me. So they were really pleased. Uh, now, I was really pleased because I wanted them to win. Now, this was something else we did with Blinkist, which worked well for both, by the way. Um, I didn't want to commit to 50 or 100 ads, you know, 100 episodes of ads, because I wasn't sure how my audience would take it. Because I had said for quite a while, I'm not going to run ads. And then I softened saying, oh, well, if Odomar Piguet or Costa Coffee approached me, that would be different. Um, so we did a deal. I think we tested four ads at first and then we did another deal, I think, for six or eight. So actually, um, it makes it easier to get ad deals done because it's not much risk for them to pay a few hundred or a few thousand for you to do an ad. But it is to pay, you know, £105 per thousand downloads and commit to 50 ads. And of course, if you do a few ads and it doesn't work for them or you, then you can change and get another ad, um, you know, advertiser in because you don't have to run the same ad for the same company over and over. You know, from, for them, maybe after 10 or 20 ads, the ROI, I might go down. For you, you might want to freshen it up with a new advertiser. OK, you can also use dynamic ads, which means you can insert ads into your old episodes um, and that can keep the ad, the episodes fresh. So, you know, for um, for three months, it could have a certain ad and then it could be replaced with another ad for three months and another ad for three months, keeping it fresh and new. Um, and also then, like I said, monetizing previous ads. Um, if you seek out relevant niche sponsors or advertisers. So let's say you have a mortgage broker podcast and you approach um, an IFA or a pension provider. That's obviously really niche and really relevant. So they're going to have good quality leads and you're going to be able to get more, um, you know, more per thousand rate. Let's say you have a hi-fi um, podcast and music and um, a turntable company or a speaker manufacturers. That would be really relevant. So Camilla here is one of my, um, she's on our podcast agency. She's one of my star legendary clients. She's got the Camilla show and she's into service accommodation. So she approached Airbnb, um, you know, or booking.com or other channel managers. That's really niche because a lot of her listeners are going to be in service accommodation. So she's likely to get ads much earlier with less downloads and it's likely to get a really high ROI for your advertiser. And if they get a high ROI, they pay you more money. So actually, the more I tell you this, the more I'm kind of like, I'm softening on now my stance with ads. I was, I was definitely a bit of an ad snob a few years ago. But if you have a, a niche ad, because, you know, sometimes I just think, oh, well, if people don't want to hear ads. But if it's a product or a service you want in your niche, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Okay. Great. Um, what do you promote anyway? Like, what do you love? Because whatever you love, McQueen, Costa, um, Audemars Piguet, Zoom, etc., whatever you love anyway, you promote for free. So why not approach them? See if you can do um, an ad model with them, an ad deal. Okay, great. So I hope you're finding this useful so far. The second model is sponsorship. Now, I see sponsorship slightly different. Some people add and sponsorship, they may deem it the same thing. Um, it is technically advertising revenue, but it's more of a partnership. So a spon uh, you could, for example, um, approach someone to say, hey, would you like to buy an episode? 
So someone who uh, advertises, their ad's going to get inserted. It might get inserted in five or 10 or 20 episodes. It might be on your podcast for three months and then it might be dynamically replaced by another advertiser. But you could go to someone and say, right, episode one, you can buy it. Um, and you will be my, the sponsor of episode one and you'll be the lifetime sponsor of episode one. Uh, and that all of a sudden has more weight, more gravitas. Episode you, Now, here's the cool thing. Um, you could sell episode one for more than episode 10. You could sell um, you know, episodes for different amounts. You could auction off different episodes because in, in theory, episode one should have more downloads than episode two. Um, you could sell the episodes with the guest interviews or the ones that get the most downloads for more money. So my Rob's rants, they get really high downloads and the interviews get really high downloads. So I could sell them for more money than I could other episodes. So it's literally a partnership with a sponsor where you, they essentially buy um, that episode. Now, Chris Evans um, is, is, has been testing well, I, don't, I haven't seen it yet, but I, I remember reading about this um, model um, where instead of running ads, they've turned away from ads uh, and the advertiser becomes a sponsor and they essentially sponsor the show and they become part of the show uh, and they get actively involved in the show. So instead of it just feeling like an ad's been slapped in, they're almost part of the concept. So that's exactly what you could do. You could have a sponsor for an episode and that sponsor could have to be on theme with the content. So um, I don't know, let's say I had an episode on um, how to do more of what you love um, and merging your passion and your profession. And I could have some kind of lifestyle sponsor. Um, let's say I um, did a uh, an episode on creating online courses where I could have Kajabi or go to webinar or Udemy as the sponsor because they run online courses. So you could get really clever with this and think, oh, yeah, OK, so this concept uh, that's would work really well with this company who do that thing. Um, and then, of course, you're likely to get more money, likely to attract sponsors. It's likely to be more niche. Uh, and I just think it's a very elegant way of running advertising. So essentially, you sell people owning episodes and you can even weave and interact the sponsor into some of the content itself. And, and, and that's, a, that's a better pitch, isn't it? Because if you think about it, you're saying, hey, you can own episode one for life. And, you know, I might do 500 or 1,000 or 2,000 episodes. I might have a podcast for three, five or 10 years and you will be the lifetime sponsor of episode one. So you could end up selling that for thousands or tens of thousands. Now, of course, that is, of course, directly negotiable between you and the sponsor. Um, and of course, there's no guarantee. Um, I've got some bell end here on live who's trolling me. Um, so I just want to make uh, it clear that none of this is guaranteed isn't, and no money is guaranteed. Um, but he said here, this dude is a scam. Obviously, I'm scamming people by giving free content on a Facebook Live. He's asked if I buy your book, will I get rich? No, you won't. I probably wouldn't buy my book. Um, yeah, and he thinks he's clever. Um, good on you, mate. Uh, right, uh, I suppose it's Sunday. People are bored. They're, they're on lockdown. Oh, he says he's not trolling. Oh, that's not trolling, calling me a scam for giving free content. All right. What is it then, mate? Are you just bought? Oh, curious. Yes, of course. I haven't got this shit made at all. I don't know what I'm doing. Ah, oh, this dude is a scam. That's curiosity. I clearly need you as a mentor, mate. Okay. Um, you can get ad revenue in the early days selling your show. Um, because you're, you can get, if you think about it, someone buying your show early could actually be a benefit to them um, because they could own it for 500 episodes where if they run an ad um, three or 400 episodes in, they don't get the um, benefit of those retrospective three or 400 episodes and tens, hundreds, thousands and millions of downloads. So I like the sponsorship model. Again, this is something that I could have done a lot more of. Uh, and I think that if you're smart, you could, you could lay out episodes 21 to 40 and you could look at the content of each one and you could approach people who have companies in that niche 
and you could offer them to own sponsorship of each show. Job done. Oh, by the way, just to let you know as well, um, this is a paid for course. It's called the Podcast Faster Online Master. It's a paid for course. And I thought it'd be quite nice um, just to live some of it out to my um, Facebook page so that, you know, many of my people who follow my Facebook page could get some paid content for free. And yet some guy still called it a scam. So I'm giving paid content for free, but it's a scam. So, um, you know, when people say do your, do your diligence and your research on um, people who provide content, well, do your fucking diligence and research on people who follow you as well. All right, then. The third ad revenue model is audience donations. Um, yeah, that's good. The Curious Troll. That is definitely a kid's book. I love it. The Curious Troll. Now, um, I've, I've not ever asked for donations because I think, um, you know, if I go, hey, look, will you donate? Um, I'm skin, even though I'm not. And Mr. Troll, I am a multimillionaire. I am a multimillionaire. So put that in your pipe and troll that. Um, but if I, I was doing my podcast and people know I'm a multimillionaire and I'm like, oh, will you donate to my show? Because, you know, I need some money for, um, you know. A new microphone, I need 15 quid for a new mic. Obviously, that's probably not going to work out. Um, so uh, if you're starting out, though, and you're an artist and you're sort of struggling a bit out there and, um, you know, you want to monetize buying cameras and Zoom equipment and, you know, what good quality hardware and software, you can ask your audience for donations. So there's no harm in asking your audience to help you. So um, the guy who says he's curious and not a troll, he actually says he loves me now. So it looks like I've turned him around and he's thanked me for the free content. So uh, uh, Andre, I don't know if I've pronounced your, your um, name right. Um, why don't you give me some stars, mate? Um, why don't you donate to me for all this free content I'm giving you? So you could use your stars program. Um, you could use, I'm going to give you a couple of websites in a minute where you could set up um, for donations you know, like Just Giving, but that's for charity. Well, there's non-charity versions of those. So um, at the end of your show, you can literally have a little script which just says, look, if you love the show, would you mind um, going to... In fact, let me get a couple of the links up for you. Would, would you mind going to buymeacoffee.com and just leaving a donation um, so that uh, I can fund growing my podcast and... Um, actually, just so you know, if I go and do an interview, it costs me li nearly a thousand quid um, because I've got to take two of my team with me and I've got to pay their wages. There's the, the travel. Um, and then if I'm renting a, a, a hotel room or a meeting room in London, so it can cost me about a thousand quid to go and interview a big guest. So I might say, look, you know, each episode does cost me money. If you're a fan of the show, maybe you wouldn't mind leaving a donation. Um, now, by the way, for donations, you don't have to give anything in, in exchange. You're basically saying, if you love the show, go and make a donation, a discretionary donation, however much you think is fair. I think you'd be very surprised that quite a lot of your audience would donate because podcasts are free. They cost nothing. If you give good content, you will build fantastic goodwill. Um, so... I think that this is a really good model. I think it's, um, it builds law of reciprocity and goodwill. But your listeners will want to support your show if they love your show. Uh, you'd think you could be surprised how generous they are. You could also tell them what you're going to invest the donations in. So like I said, if you're going to get um, equipment, tripods and cameras and um, you get editing suites, etc., and you're going to um, you, you know, look to reinvest some of the money, you could tell them about that. Um, I couldn't exactly get away with saying I'm a skint arty podcaster. Um, so, yeah. Uh, now, I don't. Um, I've never not asked for a donation. So my favourite curious troll here has said, sell your Lamborghini and people won't need to donate. I've never asked for donations, Andrew. So I think you need to start doing some of your research and getting your facts right. I've never asked for donations. I've done 100 interviews. So that's probably cost me... Um, about a hundred grand in investing in creating those interviews. I've never asked for donations. Like I said, I've only run five or six ads. I think I'd be perfectly within my right to do so. Um, but not everyone who starts their podcast has already got a good income stream, you know, and, and is yet in the position where they can fund it fully. And they might want to monetize it early. And I say to you, good on you. What, if you want to monetize your podcast early, early, then crack on. Now, there's two sites that we are very familiar with which allow you to take donations. And it's not 
Um, it's not like Just Giving or Virgin, you know, where that might be, um, you, there might be a fee or that might be for a charity. So I'm going to list these to you now. So you might want to write these down. So buymeacoffee.com. So you can go, you can set up a donation page on buy me a coffee, as in B-U-Y-M-E-A coffee.com. And you can just send people there and they can make uh, one-time donations. Um, and then there's coffee, K-O hyphen F-I dot com. Coffee, K-O hyphen F-I dot com. Um, and that. Again, you can make one-off donations. People can make one-off donations. You set up a page there. Now, for one-time donations, there are no fees. For multiple donations or ongoing donations, there will be a fee. I don't really mind paying fees. I think people are a bit funny with that. I think Patreon take 8 to 12%, and I think that's really low. Um, I think the supporters is more like 30% on Facebook. Um, but buymeacoffee.com and ko hyphen fi.com you can ask for donations now the good thing about asking for donations is it's discretionary it's not forced you could run it on your youtube ads your facebook lives you could run it on your podcast too and you could build a lot of money just by people giving out of the kindness of being a fan of yours okay great uh the fourth way to monetize your podcast then is to build your other Facebook profiles, your email database, uh, and then have an elegant sales formula from there. So um, at the end of your podcast, you could say, um, I've just written a brand new report called my six stage elegant social media sales process, where you get to create followers on social media into paid clients. If you'd like to get that free report that I've written detailing all those steps, to elegantly and effortlessly sell and not sell on social media, just go to bit.ly forward slash six stage, the number six, S-T-A-G-E, and you can get that for free. By the way, that is a live um, report that I wrote. It is at bit.ly forward slash the number six, and then the word stage, S-T-A-G-E. Careful, Andre, it's a scam. Careful, I'm giving a free report. It's a scam. (laughs) So, um, but... You could put that at the end of your podcast. Let's say you've got 10,000 subscribers, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 of them might go and then opt in to your email database. And then you could build some goodwill with an autoresponder. And then you could sell your events, your courses, your masterminds, your programs, your products and your services on the email. And, you know, people are a bit more used to being sold on email than they are maybe on a podcast. Um, So you could use lead magnets. You could do competitions and giveaways. You could say, I've got a competition running this week. If you follow me on my YouTube channel and write a comment in any of my videos, I'm going to pick 10 winners who are going to win 500 quid each, or I'm going to pick 10 winners who are going to win my Lamborghini, if you want it, Andrew. Um, So yeah, you could do competitions and giveaways and lead magnets and build your email and other databases um, off of your podcast on another channel. Natalia, thank you for your 200 stars. You're very kind. Um, if anyone wants a shout out for their business, their brand, their podcast, hit me up with 500 stars. That's just $5 to me. And I'll give you a shout out for your business, your brand, your podcast. That's it. Christian bit.ly forward slash six stage number six S T A G E. So what you get to do is use your podcast to grow your other channels. Now in previous modules on the podcast, fast start masterclass, I have told you how to build all of your social media channels. I'm currently running, although if you're listening to the recording, this will be finished, um, but all the recordings will be live. But I'm running a seven day social media challenge and I'm teaching people how to use a podcast to grow their YouTube, YouTube to grow their Twitter, Twitter to grow their Instagram, Instagram to grow their Facebook page, Facebook page to grow their Facebook group, Facebook group to grow their LinkedIn, LinkedIn to then back, go back and grow their podcast. And then on, in like a circular carousel, every couple of weeks, use a profile to grow, a profile to grow, a profile to grow, a profile. And in three to six months, you have used your existing profiles to grow your existing profiles and you've got some serious compounding. If you don't want to sell on your podcast, you want to sort of preserve the integrity of it and the value, you take them off onto a media platform where you're more comfortable selling. Yeah, job done. Uh, and so... Uh, your podcast becomes an income stream, but it becomes an indirect income stream and, and you're not selling on it every episode, which, by the way, if the content is good, you can pitch. Um, so it's all about how good the content is. But for me, I don't want to um, sell on you know, every, um, every episode. That's just my choice. 
Okay, what are we on now? Number five, something like that. So filling your events. So I don't know if you run events, maybe you run online events or or, or, or face-to-face events. Maybe you have online courses, masterminds, mentorships, physical courses, face-to-faces, masterminds. You're a consultant, um, a trainer, a coach. Uh, and you can use your podcast to fill your live streams on BeLive or on StreamYard, or um, you can use it to get people to join your go-to webinar, whether it's a live webinar or an automated pre-recorded webinar. Uh, I know a lot of people from my podcast came to the Property Super Conference, uh, so that's a great way to use your uh, podcast. Uh, now, obviously, um, while we're on live here, we're in lockdown. If you're listening to the recording, we might be out of lockdown. Uh, so previously, I would usually use the anniversary episodes, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, etc. And I'd do a special event, um, a one off event, and I'd give free tickets to it for the first 50 on episode 50, the first 100 on episode 100. Uh, and they would fill up just like that straight away. Uh, so a great way to give really good value and extra gifts and bonuses and benefits to your audience and to fill your events. And of course, when they come to events... Um, you, you, then you can commercialize it in whatever way you choose, whether that's a, you know, a, an offer at the end of the event or you do just a, a free goodwill event, but then you have a, a follow up sales process. You could also uh, sell tickets from your podcast. You could um, once they could buy some tickets and then at the event you could sell your products um, and you could get people into your full ecosystem. You could even have merch at the event. Um, in fact, I haven't even got merch as a monetization strategy. But, um, you know, I am um, someone kindly. I don't know if you can see here that I've got the disruptive T-shirt on. Well, someone was really kind. I have to rem- try and remember who the name is and shout them out. I have done it before, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But someone um, did me 50 disruptive T-shirts free. It was really kind of them. And I gave them away to people who donated stars. And I gave all that money away to charity, to the NHS. Um, so, and- Andre, if you're still here, if you're probably bored now and you're gone. But I raised £20,000 for the NHS. Um, didn't need to sell my Lamborghini to do that either. Um, and and I, they, they were gobbled up. They, I had loads of people messaging me saying, I want one of these T-shirts. Where's this disruptive T-shirt? And uh, it's not really something I was keen to do. Um, but there's definitely a merch option for you to sell on, on your podcast for sure or at the event after. Um, and then that event that you launch from your podcast, you could then record that event. And then that could be an online course. So there's so many multiple ways that your podcast can feed into, um, you know, um, income strategies. And of course, you get to meet your um, audience, your listeners, you get to meet them face to face. Uh, and just by the way, quickly, just to let, remind you, I'm doing the Q&A at the end of this one because I want to get into the flow and I've got a lot of content. We've got a couple of surprises coming up, too. OK, you could even get the guests on your podcast to headline your event. So coming up in a few days time, everyone who signed up for the podcast Fast Start Masterclass, um, uh, I did an offer um, for, uh, we've got about 50 people in this intake, something like that, a few more maybe. And I did a special offer for many of those where um, they would be able to get my podcast quarterly mastermind. And then for for the first 12, I did lifetime. Uh, And that's coming up in a few days time. And I have Jake Wood of EastEnders. I have Kevin Clifton of Strictly. And I have Katie Piper, you know, the really famous lady who's got a million Instagram followers who had the acid burns all over her face. Um, they're all um, friends of mine. I've done podcasts with them or they're listeners to my pod- podcast. And they're all doing a slot on my podcast mastermind. Three massive celebrities doing a slot on my podcast mastermind. So I've managed to find a way to use my guests and celebrity friends who were initially were guests on my show to then come back and be part of my events. So all of you who are on the podcast Fast Start Online Masterclass, keep your ears out for that because you get that as part of the program. If you're watching the live and you know, you're interested in getting on that and getting on my podcast, Fast Start Online Masterclass, private message me um, and I'll see if I can do you a deal. Okay, next then, what are we on? Six, seven, something like that is um, selling your products and services. So you used your engaged listenership to directly sell your own products and services. So I have courses, masterminds, mentoring, um, retreats, academies, uh, books, etc. And I could sell them all from my podcast. You can even run ads for your own companies on your own show. So Joe Rogan does this triple dip thing. It's very clever, whereby he'll run an ad 
which a company pays for. So let's say it's Onnit, O-N-N-I-T. He reads out an ad for Onnit, and Onnit, the company, is paying Joe Rogan for the ad. But he also co-owns and owns part of the company. So he's, he's essentially paying himself and double dipping. And um, he does interviews with MMA um, fighters. And he's a, um, a host or a commentator for UFC. And I'm telling you, I, I haven't got any facts of this, by the way. I don't know what's in his contract. So just saying I don't know. But I'm convinced that um, he'll be getting a real um, uplift in his fees for being um, a UFC commentator by virtue of the fact that he's promoting it on his podcast that has billions of downloads. That, that, that will be, uh, he'll be getting paid handsomely for that. And he promotes his comedy shows. So he's quadruple dipping. He promotes his own comedy shows, fills them, doesn't need an agent, um, probably getting an uplift in his UFC contract. He does ads for companies and ads for companies that he co-owns. Quadruple dipping. Four, at four revenue streams there. Really clever. Why, what's stopping you doing something similar? Okay, you might not be a UFC commentator, but you just got to think creatively. Uh, I reckon selling your products and services could be one of the most effective ways to monetize because um, surely your listeners are going to want your products because they're fans of you. And it's not really an ad per se. It's not like, why is Rob um, running an ad on his podcast for mattresses? I remember listening to the James Altucher show, which I love, by the way, so I'm giving it a shout out. James Altucher, great podcast. But on one of his episodes, he, he did an ad for a mattress. I'm like, what has a mattress got to do with James Altucher, who's kind of like a business and investing guy? It just seems so off. But, but if he had a product or a service himself, I would be way more keen to go for that because I'm a fan of his show and him. Um, and like I said before, I think it's a good idea to monetize after episode 20. Um, but again, you can launch your first 20 on day one. So you can actually monetize from day one. It's just not episode one. Let me know, by the way, if you're finding this useful. Cheers. I hope you are. I'm enjoying doing it. I think we're halfway through the monetization strategy, something like that. I've got plenty of questions in the questions tab for my um, attendees of the podcast Fast Start Online Masterclass. So I'll be taking them at the end. OK, next then is trickle down revenue. Now, this is where I've made nearly all the money bar a few ads on my show. This was accidental, um, but it kind of wasn't, but it was. And I'm going to explain what I mean. So anyone who follows me on my Facebook page or on my podcast or YouTube channel, for years I've been telling you, you should have multiple assets online. So you should have a YouTube channel, a Twitter account, a Facebook page, a Facebook group, um, you, if supporters and stars functionality, if you can, um, a Facebook profile, of course, a really good populated LinkedIn profile, Instagram, TikTok, podcast, of course, you name it. Now, the reason I believe it's wise to have all of those accounts, at least set up and populated, even if you're not really that active on them, is because they're all assets online. They'll all rank on Google. They will have a certain amount of organic traffic per day, per week, per month, 100, 1,000, 10,000 per platform, and that will become pound. If you've written books on Amazon and books on Audible and you've got courses on Udemy and you're really well searchable on um, Reddit and you've got loads of Trustpilot reviews, You've got loads of Google reviews. All of these assets, each one will capture followers and fans and build goodwill and social proof. Um, and then beneath that, if you've got online courses, mentorships, masterminds, products, services, all your e-com products, all your affiliations, then people are going to naturally find their own way to your products and services, your books, your audio books, your Facebook groups, your mentorships, your masterminds, your online courses. They listen to the podcast and then they trickle down and they find their own way without you having to push them and spam them and, and you know, really force ads down them. It's trickle down revenue. So it's indirect income as a result of listening to your podcast. But if you have a podcast and then nothing, not a book, not a product, not a service, etc., then you've got to probably run direct ad revenue models like advertising and sponsorship, etc. But if you already have existing products or services then you can naturally guide them towards those products and services with your podcast being the thing that builds the rapport and starts that journey. 
Now, the, I did a fag packet napkin calculation about eight months, 18 months ago. So about three years into my podcast. And I roughly reckon total revenue with all the mentoring and from what people have been saying and trying to sort of prorate that against the customers I've got and looking at all the other lead sources. I've worked out as roughly three million pounds in indirect revenue, i.e. Now, by the way, I'm not saying it's just because of the podcast because they can listen to my podcast, then a book, then come to a course. But the origin of where they found me was the podcast. And I reckon it's, I don't know, four million plus now. I, I don't know, but it's decent. Um, is selling without selling because listeners will seek out your products anyway. If you listen to my podcast and you think this content is good, you might go, oh, I've heard Rob's got a book. Go and have a look on Amazon, buy my books. Oh, Rob's got another podcast, money. I'll go check that out. Oh, it's on Facebook. I'll follow him on Facebook. A lot of people start following him on, on Facebook um, after uh, money and start now get perfect later. I guess there must be some links in there to that. And when people go on their own journey to buy your products and services, it's much more elegant. It's less salesy, less pushy um, uh, and more natural and less friction. And by the way, I have no problems with selling and selling directly. And you shouldn't be scared to sell. I'm just saying. It's also um, ongoing income. It's recurring income. It's not income you necessarily have to work for because you've already done the episode years ago. So it is recurring and relatively passive. And it will, um, it will compound over time as your podcast gets bigger and the downloads get bigger and the subscribers get bigger and it becomes more global. And then what you can do is build a full product staircase. So you could go book, discovery day, masterclass, mastermind, mentoring and retreat. You could go various different products that cascade up from local, you know, buy from a, a T-shirt, a cap and a mug, you know, all the way up to uh, signed merchandise. And I don't know what other expensive merchandise you could produce. That's trickle down revenue. And that was that's really... 99% of my income from my podcast, 98, something like that's come from trickle down revenue, never really selling anything. Okay, the next thing you can do is you can repackage your content. So let's say you've got 50, 100 episodes. You could take that content and create an online course on Kajabi or Udemy or go to webinar. Um, you, you could uh, re-record it or repackage it all and just sort of top and tail it. Um, you could create a book and an audio book or a report or a guide or a lead magnet or an online course from your um, podcast. So Tim Ferriss did this very well. He had two books, Tools of Titans and Tribe of Mentors. Uh, and these were all um, leveraged, outsourced collation of his podcast episodes, the interviews with all of his guests and all of the best bits collated into Tools of Titans and then Tribe of Mentors. Now, you know, knowing how big a following Tim Ferriss has got, he probably would have sold hundreds of thousands, if not millions of copies of those books. I saw them in loads of bookshops. Uh, and I'm not saying there wasn't work involved. You know, would have had to have repackaged it all, but he probably leveraged and outsourced all of that. And then he has um, a book that sells hundreds of thousands or millions of copies, all from the content of his podcast. Uh, and right now, Tom and I are doing the same thing. Um, well, different. Similar but different, but uh, we, we're writing a book called The Disruptive Entrepreneur, which is a collation of all the best content of the Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast. With 500 episodes in, there's more than enough for a really good deep dive book there. Um, but don't tell anyone about that just yet. All right, cool. Next then is Patreon or premium content. So we've done a full session on this podcast, Fast Up Masterclass, on Patreon. Tom covered it, told you how to set up an account, how to use it, etc. So I'm not going to duplicate that. You can go back and listen to that. But premium content models such as Patreon um, and supporter program and luminary. Uh, if you think like the Netflix of audio or, you know, or the Netflix of fan funding, what you do is you produce extra content extra value, extra bonuses, content that they can only get on the premium platform. So I have a supporter program. We have nearly 3,000 supporters. I charge just $3.49 a month. Um, and for that, people get uh, an Ask Me Anything live at least twice a month. They get, some of them can get one-to-one -one calls with me if they're action takers. Uh, many of them can get in a WhatsApp group with me. Um, we do about three or four pieces of uh, exclusive content a week. 
Uh, what else do we do? Uh, free tickets and then discounted tickets and then live meetups and socials. Um, we do challenges. So we've done four challenges already. You get all that for just $3.49 a month. So if I announced that on my podcast and sent you to my Facebook supporter page, bit.ly forward slash Rob Supporter with a capital R, that's bit.ly forward slash Rob Supporter with a capital R, or I sent you to my Patreon, because I have a Patreon as well, which is it's called the Personal Development and Mindset Collective, um, and there's about 36 pieces of content through the year, including six live meetups. Um, so I've, 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 I've got a Patreon and the supporters and you have premium, exclusive, new and different content. And it doesn't have to be a lot. It could be discounts and special offers. And it, some people just do one extra piece of content a week. I just like to um, go that extra mile and give that extra value. So you literally direct traffic from your podcast to your Patreon or your supporter program. Very, very effective. There are some huge Patreons that earn hundreds of thousands or millions of pounds a year just from their podcast subscription base and listenership. Um, Patreon's the most popular and famous one, especially in America. There's massive growth to come in the UK, so you want to set up your Patreon ASAP. Facebook supporters is growing too. I've seen the second wave now of people getting the supporter program who weren't the initial people. Um, So that's going to scale up. And there's going to be more um, premium platforms coming for sure. You could even have your own one or you could have Kajabi, for example. You already have a strong listener connection. So you're going to get a good percentage of people who are going to join your premium content because they're going to get more of you and better of you and exclusive of you. Uh, So there shouldn't be too much friction there and that should do really well. And you can do that from episode one and it still preserves your podcast from ads if you don't want to run ads. So pretty sexy. So no reason not to go and try and get supporter functionality. If you're on my social media challenge in my supporter group, um, we're keeping you updated on how best to do that. Bit.ly forward slash Rob supporter with a capital R. Go on to the module in the previous, um, the previous module of this course, previous modules. It, uh, Tom did one on Patreon. So that's just a step by step on how to set up your Patreon. Cool, cool. How are you getting on so far? Let me know. Give me some comments. Let me know how you're getting on. Going to do a Q&A at the end. I know there's a lot of content here. So for sure, come back and watch the module afterwards. I think you should be watching these modules two or three times. Of course, taking action immediately and setting up what you can. But I realise there's a lot of content in this module. So... Okay, next then is affiliations, affiliates. So you don't even have to sell your own stuff. Let's say you don't have your own stuff. Sell someone else's stuff. Sell Zoom recorders. Sell uh, someone else's course or mastermind or mentorship. We have an ambassador program. You can search Progressive Ambassadors on Facebook. You can join that Facebook group and you can get lifetime commission on all of our products and services. So you could use your podcast to affiliate with us if you don't even have your own products and services. And the great thing about that is you don't have to deliver any of it. Nothing. You just literally set, share your tracking link and you might read a few lines of a script or just speak from the heart. Uh, and then you are creating ongoing recurring income from affiliating and selling other people's products. Now, um, there's a podcast called Smart Passive Income by Pat Flynn. And he's someone who does this and he earns about 1.5 million a year, I believe. No, it's more than 2 million a year. 150 grand a month. So yeah, nearly 2 million a year. Um, just by offering other people's products and services. And he even tells you that he's doing it and teaches you how to do it. Um, and, and of course, that's a great way to create passive income. So I think it's a really good model. It means you can get started quickly. You can open an affiliate scheme straight away with a product or service that you believe in. You don't have to design it, create it, fulfill it, or create an ecosystem or a funnel or any kind of products and services. You can align with people in your niche um, so that obviously there's a good fit with your audience. You can affiliate with more than one. So you can have um, a, a, a different affiliates um, offers on different episodes. And of course, you can negotiate good deals, especially if it is on brand and on niche. If you want to know how that works a bit more, you could, of course, listen to the Smart Passive Income podcast by Pat Flynn and and just see how he does it, how he promotes it, how he moves the content into the offer, how he sort of tells you what he's doing. It's a very simple model. And if you want to start straight away, then just go to Progressive Ambassadors on Facebook, our Facebook group. 
join there. And then, by the way, we create all the webinar links. We create videos for you to um, put on your social media. We basically do a lot of the promotion and the selling for you. So it does become very passive. All right, two main areas you've got to be careful of because this is not all roses. Uh, and of course, you do have to have your wits about you. So trust, you don't want to promote a product or service you don't believe in. And if you're promoting someone else's product or service, you know, you're passing trust onto them and you wouldn't want to pass your best listeners and fans onto something dodgy. So don't just pump, pump every network marketing thing or something that you've not properly done research on. I wouldn't. And then tracking. You've got to make sure you have a good tracking link. Uh, and their tracking system is, is really um, effective because not all are. Otherwise, you're making them money and then you're not getting paid. OK, but there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. Now, um, this is not something that I'm planning to do, uh, but I bet Free Economics was uh, not planning to do this. But then they got six million US dollars for it. And that is to sell your show. So I know my friend Jake Wood has got the Pound for Pound podcast. He's negotiating at the moment to possibly sell his show. He'll carry on running it. So um, Stephen Dubner sold Free Economics for about six million carries on running the show, um, but cash is out. And then we'll still, I'm sure, get some of the ad revenue and still be cut in, I'm sure, on some of the residual income. But you might build such an asset and have so many listeners that are a, a mainstream media platform, a podcasting hosting platform, or, you know, a Gimlet Media or Spotify might want to buy your show. And then you can carry on running it um, and carry on getting residual income as well. This is what uh, Free Economics, oh, it was Stitcher they sold to, sorry. They sold to Stitcher for six million, it's estimated six million US dollars. Not bad. Six million cash in the bank for doing something you love, sharing content and running a podcast. It's not, it's not like it's freaking work or anything. Um, and, you know, Stitcher and Luminary and Spotify and all these big podcast platforms, you know, they're going bullish into this market and it's a big uh, growing industry. It's a great way to exit from your show in the, the long run um, or to cash out or just have a lump if you want. Like I said, I've got no plans. Um, if you're bought by a, a media company like Gimlet or Spotify or Stitcher, they could take you to next level. So if Stitcher came to me and said, hey, look, Rob, here's three million for your show or five million for your show. And we'll pump it and, and get it. You know, we'll get you 10 million subscribers in the next three years. We'll back it. We'll, you know, run ads on our main homepage and all of that. I'd, you know, I would consider that for sure, even though I don't like the idea of selling my assets. But I would consider that. Why not? That's probably a much longer term play. But hashtag just saying it's another income stream or asset stream monetization. Um, strategy. Cool. So we've got an exercise for you. And I want you to do this wherever you're watching. I want you to do this right now. Um, because when all is said and done, more is said than done. So stay with me. Um, I, I want you to think about which one or more of these income streams you are keen to start and when. So um, sponsorship. Let's go back. Let's go back and find them. So sell your show in the future. Selling and affiliating with other people and selling their products and services. Premium content like Patreon and supporters. Uh, repackaging your content and creating other assets like books, audio books and online courses. Um, trickle down revenue and having product ecosystems uh, that your podcast direct people into. Selling your own products and services. Filling your own events and online courses. Building other lists and selling from there. Audience donations on buymeacoffee.com and ko-fi.com. Sponsorship model or ad revenue model. So just let me know in the comments which one or ones are, of those are you most keen on implementing and when. By the way, there's no rule. And like I said, I like to monetize. I would like you to monetize after a show 20. Um, but if you, if you go live with 21 episodes, then you're monetizing from day one, which is pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet to monetize from day one. It was never really a play or even an option for me back in the day. But I'm not finished yet. So just let me know what, which one of those ad models do you prefer? Uh, and uh, are you going to start them from day one? Or um, are you going to wait a little bit and build up some subscriptions and some listenership and some goodwill?
All right, great. So um, give you about another 30 seconds to do that. Stay with me. Don't go anywhere. Right. Okay. So there are some massive side benefits of running a podcast. You get to repurpose content. You could do lives at the same time on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, You could read chapters of your book to become a podcast. Uh, You could do live events and record them and that could become a podcast episode. You could get interviewed on other people's podcasts and that could be put on your podcast. So you get multiple streams of income and multiple streams of leverage. I get paid £10,000 to do my keynote speeches. I'll record them with the permission of the promoter and that can go on my podcast in the future and I'm getting extra income streams and extra repurposable content there. Massive leverage. You get to meet amazing people, celebrities, billionaires who become your friends and they will if you do your podcast long enough, big enough and well enough and you stay consistent. People will end up buying all your stuff. They'll become your highest paid mentoring clients. You'll get... uh, massively increased lifetime client value, goodwill. They'll become your ambassadors, your raving fans, just from all the remote rapport built by listening to your shows. You'll build huge credibility. So again, I became, I'm more famous for my podcast than anything else, even though I've done more than 100 million in sales and written, what, 15, 16 books um, and own hundreds of properties and manage even more and have various companies. And far and away, I'm most famous for my podcast over anything else. Far and away. It's the softest sale ever. You know when you do a podcast and people naturally find your products and services? So if you don't really like selling, then podcasts are are great for that. Um, You get this trickle-down revenue effect. And you're right at the start, only 600,000 active podcasts. When there's 60 million Facebook pages, um, it's just, just such an exciting opportunity for you. You are in at the perfect time. And you can get interviewed yourself. So uh, you can become a go-to person in your niche and you can grow your podcast by being interviewed on your podcast and then you can repurpose it to your audience um, for net time leverage. So uh, podcasting is going to grow and grow and grow and grow. It's picking up massive speed and momentum. Ad revenue is up 72% year on year with a a billion dollars in ad revenue predicted for 2020. Um, And by the way, in, in the lockdown, subscriptions and listenerships has gone up, certainly from my podcast anyway. Um, So actually, I don't think that that will drop like it might do in any other um, uh, industries where the revenue might like half. Um, Technology is improving all the time, like dynamic ad insertion. Uh, So basically, um, there's going to be more ways to to interact and to be intuitive and to monetize and to grow and to scale your podcast and then to become more user friendly. Uh, word of mouth is obviously a great way because pe- fans of podcasts will recommend your podcast. Like, you know, you see a film at the cinema that you love, you just go and tell people about it. So it's actually really powerful for word of mouth. I think it's probably more powerful than, say, a YouTube channel. You know, I, don't, I don't think you connect quite with a YouTube channel as much as you do as a host of a podcast. Um, and of course, the more podcasts um, that grow. So, you know, some people are like, oh, well, there's so many podcasts out there. Well, the more podcasts that happen, the more opportunities there are for you to be a guest on the podcast um, and for, you know, for you to grow your podcast up to their listenership. So actually, they're not competition. You can end up collaborating with your competition, which is obviously very sweet and powerful. So are you going to start now or are you going to sit on the fence? Because to know and not to do is not to know. And when all is said and done, more is said than done. Now, whilst we might be towards the end of the content of the podcast Fast Start Masterclass, um, there is way more to do. You've got to set up your podcast, get your equipment if you haven't already, start recording your episodes, edit your episodes, host your episodes, syndicate your episodes, do the show notes, do the design, get them up on Stitcher and Podbean um, and iTunes and everywhere else. Now, you can do all that yourself. We've taught you that on this podcast, Fast Up Masterclass. If you're watching here, by the way, private message me if you're interested in jumping in on the podcast, Fast Up Masterclass. But those of you on this course, we've we've taught you how to do all that. The problem is most people end up not doing all that because they get overwhelmed, because it's not really their flow. I'll be honest, I wouldn't have a podcast if I had to do all that myself. That is just straight up honest. 
Tom, Harry, Aaron, Ben, Felicity, um, Harry. These guys have all helped me over the years. Uh, I literally record on my Zoom H1. I, I stick the memory card in this little memory card. It goes into the side of my computer. I log into WeTransfer and I WeTransfer it to, for it to them and that's it. If I'm doing a video at the same time, I hit finish, I hit save and I WeTransfer that video to Harry and then he does all the rest. You should be focusing on content. Content, content, content. You should be a content machine. You should be getting great guest interviews. Uh, you should be growing your listenership, your subscriber base. That should be your job. That should be your only job. Uh, and then the editing, the hosting, the syndicating, the show notes, the design, um, you know, the putting on all the different platforms, it, like even on voice, you can now voice search for my podcast. I believe that you should be leveraging that as much as you can. Uh, you want the baby and not the labor pains. Um, so here are your options. And I'm just going to level with you and be very blunt and honest. Um, I, I, as you know, if you follow me, I'm a guy about taking action. I don't want you to sit in your pants and listen and think, yeah, that was good content. I got a lot from that and then do nothing with it. Um, I, I'd rather get under your skin a bit and, you know, push you um, persuasively, naggingly into actually taking action. So you can do nothing now. You can go, yeah, nice content, Rob. Great. Good value. Cool. See ya. Uh, and then in two or three years time, you can meet people who've got really successful podcasts and that could have been you. Or you can manage, host, edit, syndicate, grow, admin and run your own podcast yourself. It can be done. It absolutely can. It's just time, effort, energy, some money, distraction. Um, and now, if you're a, you kind of geek out and you love all that kind of stuff, like some of my team do, fine. If you know you're a baby and not the labor pains kind of person, if you know you want to do it because of your content, you want to grow your subscription base, your listenership, you want to focus on all the monetization strategies and you don't want to do everything else, then you can uh, think about the third option. And the third option is to leverage my team to leverage our experience, to leverage our mistakes um, and to you know, basically take Tom, Harry, Aaron, Ben, Felicity. Um, we've got Louis. We've got Serge. Uh, I've definitely missed one or two people there. They edit, they host, they figure out, um, you know, how to get really good um, growth strategies in podcasting, you know, how to do the keyword research and the, and the, the, um, the show notes and the, the ad images and designs and keeping that fresh and redesigning it and getting it listed and, and ranked. They, they do all of that work. They do all of that for me. So essentially, you've got the chance now to partner with me and my team. Now, just so we're clear, I'm not going to ask you for any money at this stage. In fact, this is an application and not um, any kind of um, sale uh, from me. So you might want to do this and it might not be right for you or us and we might turn you down. Um, but what, all you're going to need to do is just uh, show your interest by either private messaging me on any of my social media channels. So maybe Facebook, PM me or, um, or wherever you follow me on social media, just private message me with your name, email, phone number. That's what I'm going to need, your name, email, phone number. Um, and I'm also going to give you an email address where you can email me your name, email, phone number as well. In fact, let me get that right now. So if you're interested in partnering with me and having my agency do everything for you, um, let me just scroll through really quickly. I'll come back to all of that because I've got a sweet offer for you. It's um, podcast at progressiveproperty.co.uk. So message right now, podcast at progressiveproperty.co.uk. There'll be no payment link. I'm not asking you for any money. I'm looking for five or six people max. We normally, I asked Tom this morning, how many, how many clients do we like to take in in one go? He said five, six. We want to look after them, get them set up quickly. That takes time and resource from us. Um, so if you're interested in us being your agency, us being your host, us being your provider, your designer, your show note creator, your editor, your hoster, your syndicator, your advisor, your mentor uh, and everything, then email your name, email, phone number to podcast at progressiveproperty.co.uk. Now, those of you that are on the live, by the way, you need to do that now. Um, like I said, we're going to take five or six on this intake. If you're watching a recording, we may have a new intake or we may uh, invite you to the next intake because we take about five or six people per intake. 
Um, so just let me know by emailing podcast at progressiveproperty.co.uk or private messaging me. Now, by the way, I haven't even half told you um, what we offer. And I think you're going to absolutely love this, by the way, because we do a lot in our agency. We have a hundred odd um, agency clients right now. So my biggest competitor in the property training space also happens to be a friend is Simon Zucci. And he's hired us for, for our podcast agency. So our competitors are hiring us. And by the way, he said he recommends us. He thinks our, our agency is really good. You may have heard of people like Ryan Pinnock and Nick James and Andy Harrington and Kevin Clifton from Strictly Come Dancing. We've got some big names who hire us on our agency. Um, and, you know, they realise that for, you know, not, amount, not that much money, um, they can have the baby and none of the labour pains because their job is content. Your job is content. So um, you should focus on that. And we will edit for you, show note for you, admin for you, host for you. Um, Tom, Harry, Felicity, Kieran, that was it, Kieran. Kieran's my head of social media. So we'll also teach about how, you know, we'll help you with um, sort of knowledge and strategies on YouTube chat, on your YouTube channel, all the updates from the podcast world or the Facebook world or the social media world. I simply would not have a podcast if it was not for all my guys. Now, by the way, I pay them on a full-time salary. So you're leveraging me. And by the way, we use me as the disruptor, the innovator, the um, we, we sort of use me as the trailblazer. So I go and do all the testing and work out new platforms and spend all the money on ads and try and figure out stuff. And then that all filters down to you and you get the benefit of that. So our podcast media agency um, is one of the first um, podcast agencies in the world. It's very unique. Uh, I don't think there is any podcast agency like us, especially with our very, very competitive rates. We do everything for you, but um, you have to have um, an existing podcast, or you have to have come through our podcast media masterclass. That's why I'm telling you about it now and I haven't before. So if you're watching and you haven't yet done our podcast fast start online masterclass, you'd need to go through that first. Um, again, PM me if you're interested in that. We'll set up your podcast, we'll host it, we'll syndicate it, we'll even help you launch it, and we'll manage every single episode. Um, you can use our studio. You've got access to our team, depending on the levels of, we have three service levels that you can use. All you have to do is content and some marketing. And we do all the rest. Uh, you get the baby without the labour pains. We have nearly 100 clients now. Uh, we take about five to six clients every probably one to two months. So, I mean, we've been out running this agency now, what, three years? And we've got about 100 clients. So that's not a lot. That's about 30-ish per year. So we, we, we don't do mass selling, mass advertising. You've probably never even heard of this before um, because it's not that. It's a boutique bespoke agency, not a massive, um, you know, like worldwide, I don't know, um, huge pitch offer. Um, Jamie, how you doing, by the way? Good to see you, my friend Jamie, who's um, a master of social media. Just wanted to say hi to you. OK, so it's a boutique agency. Um, where we have a lot, of, by the way, a lot of people who use our agency are very successful business owners in their own right already. They're already big influencers, so they get the time leverage. Doesn't mean you can't do it if you're not a startup podcaster. Um, but, you know, but, uh, Sally Lawson, who um, is, she's got a big franchise. Um, she's just inquired about taking us up on the agency. Like I said, celebrities like Kevin Clifton use us. Um, a, a famous Blue Pre Peter presenter I'm um, advising at the moment about launching her podcast. So you're in good hands. Uh, I've had my podcast four and a half years. We've been um, helping clients for three years uh, with our bespoke uh, podcast agency. I think it's going to cost you a lot more money and take you a lot longer doing it on your own. So you get to leverage us for a very small retainer. Um, we're approaching now 10 million downloads of my podcasts um, and about 6 million a year across our agency. So this is no small fry. This is quite a big machine. So here's what it is. Now, by the way, if you're watching the video, um, you're going to need to private message me and I'll send you a copy of these slides because there's quite a lot to them. So just private message me for that. And remember, name, email, phone number on support at progressiveproperty.co.uk to show your interest and apply um, to have our agency help you. OK, so there's Starter Pro and Studio Pro level. Starter Pro, Studio Pro. On Starter, you get two episodes a month. On Pro, you get four episodes a month. And on Studio Pro, you get infinite episodes a month. Uh, you're hosted on Omni with us on every level. You get um, uh, detailed enterprise analytics, i.e. all the analytics and all the back end on all your podcasts and reach and demographics, etc. You get that on every level. 
You get support calls with our agency team on every level. Uh, now, detailed and optimized show notes you only get on Pro and Studio Pro. Um, dedicated 24-hour support you get on Pro and Studio Pro. You get iTunes and Stitcher on all levels, Starter Pro and Studio Pro. You get TuneIn and Google Podcast Hosting on Pro and Studio Pro. You get artwork on Pro and Studio Pro. You get intro music and voiceover artist on Pro and Studio Pro. You get five alternate networks on Pro and 10 on Studio Pro. So we've got a level for everyone. Starter, if you're just a hobbyist. Pro, if you know, you're a bit of an influencer. Studio Pro, if you want to go big and, and have a, a proper serious brand. Um, you, you get a chance to be a mentor in our podcast mastermind and a, a podcast trainer. So we've got two podcast trainers in addition to me, and they are um, on our podcast agency and students of us. So you could earn a lot of money <coughs> training for us. Um, you get podcast quarterly mastermind for life on Studio Pro. You get the pitch for profit £4,000 course on Studio Pro. And get this, this is the big one. Um, mentoring with me is 25 grand minimum per year. And I've, I've had more than 100 clients in the last, what, five years on that program. I've probably currently got 40 or so. Um, and if you do Studio Pro um, Lifetime, um, which I'll talk to you about in a minute, you get lifetime mentoring with me. So you get full access to me on WhatsApp day and night for life if you go for the full pay option on Studio Pro. So email support at progressiveproperty.co.uk if you're interested in applying for one of those. Not asking for any money. So, you know, at this stage, it's not a pitch. It's just an application. So let me summarise then. Um, you get two episodes, so two episodes on Starter, four on Pro, Infinite on Studio Pro. Omni hosting on all of them, analytics on all of them, support calls on all of them, um, show notes detailed and optimised on Pro and Studio Pro, 24-hour guaranteed reply Pro and Studio Pro, iTunes and Stitcher on all of them, um, tune in and Google Podcasts on Pro and Studio Pro, artwork on Pro and Studio Pro, voiceover and intro music Pro and Studio Pro, Five alternative networks on Pro, 10 on Studio Pro. And then on Studio Pro, you could become a podcast mentor and earn as a trainer and a coach. You get podcast media mastermind quarterly um, masterminds for life. I've got Kevin Clifton and Katie Piper. And also, uh, I'm Jake Wood on the upcoming mastermind. Um, uh, you get the four grand uh, three day pitch for profit course free on Studio Pro. And you get mentoring on WhatsApp with me for life on the Studio Pro. This is some sweet deal we're doing here. And we're, by the way, I'm going to do your lockdown special offer. So I'm going to give you the retail prices. And now I have people on this agency that have paid these prices, um, but this is lockdown. And so we're making some concessions. So on starter, it's £700 deposit and £2.59 a month, or you can pay £4,600 and you get lifetime starter. You could get 30, 40, 50 years on the starter agency package for just 4,600 plus that with a 50% a 50 deposit. Pro is 1,300 plus that down and then 450 a month. And eight grand gets you lifetime offer. So you could again, 30, 40, 50, 60 years for just eight grand, always having us as your podcast agency, 50% deposit. And then Studio Pro, the big package, that's um, 2,300 deposit. And then seven nine nine a month um, or £14,000 lifetime. Now, just so you know how it works, you put 700 down, uh, you get three months for that. And then you're in three months, you've got 259 a month. You can up or downgrade within those three months. Um, the Pro is 1300 down, 450 a month after 90 days. Uh, the Studio Pro is 2-3 down and 7 9, 9 a month after 30 days. Um, and uh, Lifetime offers Starter 4-6, um, Pro 8, and then Studio Pro 14. Now, these are the retail prices. I've got lots of people on this, but we're doing a lockdown special offer at the moment. So the Starter, we are completely waiving the um, setup fee. You deposit of £400 and then it's 199 a month plus that. The Pro, we're waiving the setup fee. Uh, it's £600 deposit. And then it's just 349 plus that. And then the Studio Pro, we're waiving the setup fee. It's just 1000 deposit. And then it's 599 a month after that. 
and the lifetimes are dramatically reduced. So on the starter, it's just £3,400 for lifetime agency services with a 50% deposit to get going. Um, the Pro is just 6000 plus that um, with a 50% deposit going for lifetime on the Pro level. And then um, Studio Pro, the big dog package, that's just 10,000 lifetimes. That's a four grand discount with 50% deposit down. So let me summarize one more time then. Um, so basically, you're getting the setup fee waived, no charge. You're getting your, essentially your first 90 days free to try it. You need to give us two months notice. So your maximum exposure is two months. You get, essentially, you get your 90 days paid up with just the deposit. And then if you don't think the agency is great for you, you can cancel and then um, we just need two months notice because we've got to give all you all the assets and get you on Omni Studio and all that. And it takes time and we've got 100 clients. So your risk is only really two months worth of monthly fees. So you've not really got a lot to lose. So again, um, you just need to apply at support at progressiveproperty.co.uk. I need your name, email, phone number. If you're watching the recording, we may be having a, a, a new intake or we'll put you on a waiting list for the next intake. Um, let me summarise it all then. You can see on this screen, Starter Pro and Studio Pro. Starter is two episodes a month, basic hosting um, for you who just wants a hobby podcast. Um, and that is just £400 deposit when you um, free set up £400 deposit. You get three months for that and then one nine nine a month or lifetime at 3400 Pro is just 600 down. For, it's basically 90, 90 days for that. And then 349 a month. Or lifetime is just £6,000 plus that um, with a 50% deposit. And then Studio Pro, if you're an influencer, you want to grow a big brand. You know, you want to be on all the channels, all the networks. You want lifetime mentorship with me on, on WhatsApp. You want the podcast quarterly mastermind for life. You want voiceover, artwork, all your intros done, everything. That's just £1,000 deposit down, which covers your 90 days. And you basically get to try it for that. And then five nine nine a month or a lifetime is ten thousand pounds plus for that. Wow! Um, Tom said we look like we've got a lot of applications so far. He said on the um, Q and A panel, Jane wants a call on Monday, which is tomorrow. So this looks like there's quite a lot of demand for this. So email per, um, support at progressiveproperty.co.uk. So let me just summarise then. Um, it's strictly application only. I'm not asking for any money. I'm letting you know the discount, the lockdown offer, the features, the benefits. Um, you will email me. We'll just check that it's right for you. And then you'll speak to Khadija um, and she'll talk through your podcast, your concept, just to check it's all right for you. And then if it's right, we'll get you started and we'll do the first five or six only. Um, because we, again, you know, there's a lot of work for us to do up front. Um, so yeah, about five or six people we're looking to start. There's about 50 people plus on this online um, podcast fast start masterclass you want to be quick there's been it looks like there's been probably 1500 people watching this video um, we want to launch you as quick as possible so if you want the baby and lot the labor planes we're going to try and get you launched before the lockdown ends we're going to try and get you launched in 30 days you have to get the recordings done so if you don't we can't but if you get all the recordings done we're going to try and launch you in the next 30 days which is bloody quick we only want to work with serious, motivated podcasters. Now, by the way, you don't have to be successful already. You don't have to have a massive concept or brand already. You could be a, a startup. But we want people who are serious about it, who are really passionate about podcasting, who want to grow their podcast, who want to give good value and want to focus on the content and the marketing and want us to do everything else. Um, so, by the way, the person who will talk to you, Khadija, she's also got a really successful podcast herself. So she's not a salesperson per se. And she's on our agency. She uses our agency. And she did our podcast course back in the day to inspire her and teach her and train her to do um, the podcast herself. So she's not like a tele salesperson. She's actually living and breathing podcaster using our agency. So email podcast at progressiveproperty.co.uk. Right now, I'm going to give you about a minute left. Um, Richard Stone's interested in about Studio Pro Lifetime. Uh, so thank you, Richard, for that. Um, Jane... Uh, and Jack are both interested. Thank you, guys. So any questions now? I said I'd uh, do Q&A sessions at the end. Um, let's have a look. So, yeah, Lifetime is essentially a one-off fee. And we will run your podcast forever. Or and I've got my death, not yours, because you might outlive me. Um, and if I'm dead, it's done anyway. Um, but basically, as long as our agency is running... Uh, then you have our services. And I don't know any agency on the planet, and there aren't many agencies who do podcasts, who do lifetime agency packages. 
Um, so by the way, our, a lot of our costs are upfront, setting, hosting, syndicating, artwork, design. You know, once we're rolling, it's, there's a lot less cost to us. Um, Kev Clifton, I think he's got lifetime package with us, I think. Um, and we, I think about a third of our clients take Lifetime Studio Pro because it's such a bargain. You get mentorship. With, I mean, people pay me 25 grand a year to mentor them and you're getting 10 grand lifetime. You're getting all this lifetime agency package and you get me on WhatsApp mentoring you for life. It's, it's, it's WhatsApp, uh, my mobile number, by the way. Um, cool. Um, Dan, progressive team, do we come here on Tuesday for the podcast mastermind access? No, that's... Um, we're still in lockdown, so Podcast Mastermind is online until we're out of the lockdown. Um, okay, Jane, what is the email address for the, po- for the agency application? It's support. Sorry, it's not. It's podcast at progressiveproperty.co.uk. Let me say that again. Podcast at progressiveproperty.co.uk. Julie, Hop- Hopkin. Julie Hogbin is a lifetimer. She said it's a no-brainer. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, me, Julie. Okay, Richard's keen on lifetime. So, Richard, if you email podcast at progressiveproperty.co.uk. Um, by the way, those of you that don't have a staff or a team or outsources, this is perfect for you. Um, Josiane has already booked with our agency. So, thank you, Josiane, for that. Jack has asked, do we get access to your studio? Yes, you do on Studio Pro. Um, on Starter, you don't. Definitely on Studio Pro. Tom can tell you about the Pro package. Um, Jill has asked if you'll be emailed the link. No, it's podcast at progressiveproperty.co.uk. You'll have to email us your name, email, phone number. Let me know if you've got any questions on the live. Okay, so actually, Jenny just asked, what if you don't have a team to delegate? Then I think using our agency is... Perfect. Okay, love that, Wendy. Love that, Claire. Um, Claire's asked, would you explain opportunity to become a podcast mentor? Yeah, if you're on Studio Pro, you can sit in on our podcast courses um, and you can get our training uh, modules and um, train the trainer program. Uh, and you can go through the process of um, being someone who delivers that course in the future and gets a share of the revenue. Fifty uh, percent discount on Pro for a for the um, studio hire, and on Studio Pro, I guess it's free. Oh, and by the way, you don't have to come to the studio if you're with our agency. You can just record them at home, and we transfer them to us. Or you can come to the studio. So Paul O'Mahony, he is also O'Mahony. He's also a, a, a lifetime client on our podcast agency. And each time he's in London, he whizzes up to Peterborough and he does six or seven episodes, bashes them all out, and then goes back to Ireland and does that once a month. Anthony, should I hold back a good guest episode for after my podcast launch? I can probably get some guests with large audiences for my first six. You could have a brilliant guest on episode one if they'll do the first episode. And then maybe on episode six, that might be a good idea. Okay, Aaron will also help you setting up your kit and getting all all your stuff done at home if you're on our agency. I don't know why I squeaked there, agency. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Any questions you've got? So finally then, email podcast at progressiveproperty.co.uk if you are keen to apply to be with our agency. I'm going to close that in five, four, three, two, one, boom. Boom.